Well, I guess Roman Catholicism ain't that bad, huh? <laughs> well, well, think about it, right? Let's think about this. <laughs> Roman Catholicism has a lot of stuff wrong, right? But they got who God is, right? One God in three persons. But they got that right. They got a lot of other things wrong, but they got that right. So they just they just messed up. Remember, the Protestants, the Reformers, were Catholics wanting to reform Catholicism. Lutherans, the German Catholic Church, I rest my case. I guess Rome ain't that bad, because uh, doctrinally, salvifically, it's the same from Genesis on to Revelation. Hmm? There's no shifts in uh, salvation. There's none of that. It's the same from Genesis on to Revelation. This is all written to, to all of us, you know. Yeah, yeah. And they mentioned uh, John Nelson Darby and C.I. Schofield. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Roman Catholic Church is anti-rightly dividing the word of truth. Huh which is imperative so so okay uh two out of three right uh they, they got who god is right okay yeah one god in three persons blasphemy uh, they don't rightly divide the word of truth the whole thing is written to you whoever you are okay written for you not all written to you. There's a big difference, okay? And, and they teach that Christians are going to be going through the Great Tribulation. Because remember, the Jesuits came up with the doctrine of the rapture. And they go to that Lacunza guy, right? And they say, uh, what do what they call futurism or something like that? Is a Jesuit doctrine? Hmm. So I guess Rome. And remember, you know, there's the Jesuits and then there's Rome. When today Jesuitism is Roman Catholicism. Okay. So I guess Rome ain't that bad after all, huh, guys? You people who follow uh, Mr. Norman and Mr. Juggler 66, right? Or whatever his name is, huh? Well, they talk about the, they talk against Jesuits, yes. But they attribute the scriptural doctrine and truth. They teach that the scriptural doctrine and truth of the redemption of the purchased possession was created by Jesuits. You guys are willfully ignorant. You're stupid. You're stupid. Okay? So, I guess Rome ain't that bad, huh? Eh? They got all this stuff wrong. But they got who God is right. If you can't tell this is sarcasm, uh, quit, put, put the pipe down, okay? Um, they got who God is right. One God and what, three persons. They got all this stuff wrong, but they got that right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, they, they don't rightly divide the word of truth. Hmm? They got all that stuff wrong, but, you know, the whole scripture is written to you. To you. It's written for you, but it's all not written to you. So they're against uh, rightly dividing. So they, they're, they're right on that, right? And remember, the Jesuits, which came up with the doctrine of the, uh, the rapture uh, for the Protestants, right? You stupid idiots. Uh, Christians are going through the Great Tribulation. They got that right, so hey! Hey! I guess Rome ain't that bad, you wicked... <coughs> you wicked devils. You wicked devils. Why don't you just go ahead and put a dog collar on your neck, you Jesuit infiltrator? You know, this morning, 
I was doing my devotional reading and a brother of ours, a dearly beloved brother, sent me a couple text messages. And I'm like, I, I look at it, I was like, whoa! <laughs> And it's like, huh. And I, recently there was this one uh, guy who was on the channel. I, Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. But it's been made apparent to me by the Lord that um, got to make a video about the redemption of the purchased possession. Now, like I said, there are these guys out there who say that the doctrine of the rapture, okay, was created by Lacunza. I tried, I tried to get, apparently there is an actual physical book, uh, like a 600 page book or something, apparently, where, written by this Jesuit Lacunza guy. And His Holiness from Maine even did a video about this. I'm not going to put anything of his anywhere on the channel, I can't. I won't. But he even addressed this. I tried to find this document to get a piece of paper so I can actually read it. A while ago, um, I was in fellowship with a disturbed young woman who could find a needle in the haystack. There wasn't. If there's information that you needed to be found, that little girl, she could find it. She couldn't come up with it. A devil from England, even, uh, way back when. Um, uh, even he could, you know, they come up with stuff about this Lacunza, but I have not yet seen the actual printed text or this book where this Lacunza, I would like to read it. I would like to read it. But they all come by this Lacunza where these guys go to to say that the Jesuits came up with the rapture for the Protestant church. You guys are on crack cocaine. Hey, I guess Paul was a Jesuit then, huh? First of all, let's, let's address one thing. The word rapture is not in the Bible. At least not that I'm aware of. The word rapture is not in the Bible. The word rapture is definitely not in the scriptures. And when you say the Bible, which one? Huh? The NIV? The ESV? The NKJV? Huh? The New Living Bible? The uh, New, Living, uh, New Living Translation? Or the... Whatever plethora hefe they have of these things, huh? Uh, to my knowledge, not one of them has the word rapture in it. The scriptures doesn't have the uh, word rapture in it either. No, it doesn't. Bravo! Bravo! No, it doesn't. Redemption of the purchased possession is in there. Catching away, caught up is in there. But you're right! Bravo! Good for you. I'll give you a bozo button later. You're right. The word rapture is not in the scriptures. And as far as I'm aware, it's not even in the Bible. You're right. Again, bravo. Take a bow. Very proud of you. That's very nice. But this thing that of a redemption before chaos comes. 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 on verse 9. Knowing this, for, oh, and by the way, we're reading from the authorized version of the scriptures. There are those who adhere to the authorized version of the scriptures, and yet they want to tell you that the Jesuits have come up with the doctrine of the rapture. And you know what? With the thing about the rapture, they may have well. But see, the redemption of the purchased possession, you stupid willfully ignorant individual is taught in scripture and its concept, which we are going to look at, is throughout. You just want to prove to everybody how righteous you are by enduring to the end to be saved. And see, and see, here's the thing, here's the thing. These people who are against the redemption of the purchased possession are usually not rightly dividing the word of truth. 
Hey, Tom, you blittering idiot. When did the New Testament begin? Huh? It didn't begin with the Council of Nicaea, you idiot. No, it began with the death of the testator, rightly dividing the word of truth. See, okay, rightly dividing the word of truth. The whole of Scripture is written for you, dear friend. It is not all written to you. Okay? But, 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 and verse 9. By the way, saints, you're gonna, you might seem mean brat today, just to warn you. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation of the creation. And that's one of their arguments. That's one of their arguments. You know, you look in uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs and you read what atrocities the saints went through. Come on, don't you think if you were in those shoes, it's like, Lord, this is pretty bad. Where, where are you coming? Where, where is to come up hither? Um, Psalm 115, Psalm 115, verses 1 on to verse 2. Psalm 115, verses 1 on to verse 2. Uh, not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory, for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. Wherefore should the heathen say, heathen say, where is now their God? And of course, Ecclesiastes 8, Ecclesiastes 8, verse 11, not Song of Songs. Ecclesiastes 8, verse 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Go back to 2 Peter chapter 3. Picking up verse 4 again. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of. Willingly, not wanting to know. You're stupid. Stupid. Okay? All right? That by the word of God, the heavens were of old. And the earth standing out of the water and in uh, in the water. Right there, Peter, the Holy Ghost through Peter is declaring that that by the word of God the heavens were of old, saying that the scriptures tells us how things began, you know, Genesis. Okay. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, authorized version of the scriptures, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Now see, there are a lot of people who are ignorant. They ain't nothing wrong with being ignorant. Being ignorant is you just don't know better. And Christians usually are not, Christians in the buildings are usually teaching one God and bloop, three persons. They're not rightly dividing the word of truth and Christians are going through the great tribulation. Hey, you, you Christians in the buildings, non-denominational, and all you filth. Go ahead, get yourself the little Jesuit dog collar, put that on, and go ahead and eat the cookie and drink the wine because you're basically teaching Catholic doctrine. Okay? All right? <clears throat> anyway, and see, verse 7 is also declaring that the scripture is truth because it tells you the beginning and it tells you the end, okay? So this is also very good for you to use with some of these wicked people out there. It's like the scriptures declare it's, itself to be the truth. The scriptures, not a Bible. Distinction, distinction, distinction distinction people okay but beloved be not ignorant of this one thing 
that one day is with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. People like to point to this and uh, make reference onto the kingdom of heaven. Verse 8 is actually what it's being talked about, is that our Lord, here's, here's, here's time as we know it, here's God. He's not bound by our time. We are bound by time. Thermodynamics, everything breaks down in time. Contrary to what evolution says, they say things get better in time. Hey, evolutionist, that, that, never mind. Because if I ask you, is this what's going on today? Is that getting better? The atheist who really believes in their religion have to be like, well, yeah. You know, why did you share what you're smoking, huh? <laughs> I'll make some in my oatmeal, okay? <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> this is talking about how God is outside of our time, okay? Verse 9. Verse 9. Where's your God? How come, where's this redemption of the purchased possession? Huh? Look at how thing, bad, bad things are going. we got to be going through the great tribulation. Hey, Find me the great tribulation. The, look at me, the, the word T-H-E, the great tribulation. Find it for me in the scriptures and put it in the comment section for me, please. Find it for me. Go ahead. Just like the T-H-E antichrist. Find it for me in the scripture and put it in the comment section. The same brother that uh, the Lord used to kick me to get this thing going today, um, he came across some twit uh, where the brother was talking to this guy. It's like, the Antichrist is not in scripture. And then this one guy using philosophy, circular reasoning, and he doing yea hath God said, so yes, the Antichrist is in Scripture. It's like, dude, 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 the, the, is this, is this the perfect word of God or not? Well, yea, hath God said, shut up, go away, go to hell. Is this the perfect word of God? Hmm? No, no, come on. Hey, even you coadjutors, okay, uh, A, you coadjutors, come on. This, this is the perfect and they're given by inspiration word of God. For the suspension of disbelief, you have to say that, you devils, okay? But is this the perfect word of God? Ah, uh, yeah? The great tribulation. Find it for me in the scriptures and put the verse in the comment section. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Please. Good luck. The Lord, verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, <laughs> but that all should come to belief. Repentance. Well, repentance is going from unbelief to belief. You richling, you richling I scumbag, shut up. Shut up. Free gracer, shut up. The devils also believe and tremble. Okay? You know, in John, the same ones that believed on Jesus ended up wanting to stone him. Ugh. Anyway. Anyway. Why hasn't the redemption of the purchased possession happened yet? I don't know. Two trains. Judgment against the wicked, so that, you know, digging your grave, even, you know, give them more rope to hang themselves on, or the one that I adhere to, even though I understand both sides of that coin, who is the Lord going to save today that wasn't saved yesterday? I adhere more onto that end, rather than, even though I understand it and I get it, and I agree with it, but I hold more to be, yeah, because I like to be a little bit more optimistic about things. I will give you that. I'm not in totally, totally bitter in the heart, okay? I, I get it. I get 
you know, well, the Lord could just be standing up there. You guys have no idea the, uh, the depth of your hole you are digging for yourself. That could be a, a very valid, yes. Why hasn't it happened yet? Well, well look at what has happened. Why didn't it happen in the time of uh, the martyrs, and like in Fox's book of martyrs? And you know what? For that angle of the argument, think about it. Where women were getting their bosoms ripped off, cooked, and served to them. You know, uh, the Adventist guy, uh, uh, Veith, a brother, sent me that link about how the Jesuits would torture people sitting in a chair with spikes in it. Uh-huh. During the Inquisition. Okay? All right. Well, why didn't that happen then? I don't know. I don't know. And the saints in that time going through that kind of persecution and stuff. It's like, Lord, how bad does it have to get? Right? And logically, when you are presented with that, it's like, what are you going to say? It's like, I don't know. I don't know why. But this I do know. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness. Like you devils out there who say that the scriptural doctrine of the redemption of the purchased possession was created by the Jesuits. The Lord rebuke you. Okay? If you don't know that, the truth about it, search the scriptures, whether these things be so. Okay? But if you are aware and choose to believe that the Jesuits came up with this, you're a devil. You can go to hell. Okay? You can go to hell well, and go ahead and take the mark of the beast while you're at it going through the Great Tribulation. I told you, you might see me and Brad today. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Go to Genesis chapter 7. Go to Genesis chapter 7. Okay? Saints know what we're talking about. I, uh, again, this primary, this, this whole week, brethren, the Lord's got a lot of stuff going on. Um, brethren, know this. If you don't know this, also will be a few links in the description box for you to consider. But uh, anyway, Genesis chapter 7, verses 1 on to verse 6. Here's a type of the redemption of the purchased possession. A type thereof. How is it a type? And the Lord said unto Noah, Genesis chapter 7, verses 1 on to verse 6. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. I like that it says, Come. Come thou, come on, come, come. Not God put him there, but he's like, Psst, come on, let's go. Verses 16, uh, 17 and 18 in Genesis chapter 6. The Lord says, And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with Thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. Ark. The ark was made of gopher wood. You know, it's like, hey, gopher wood. <laughs> no, but the ark was made out of wood. Okay, a wooden ark, obviously. Okay. Ver uh, chapter 7 again. Let's begin. Verses 1 and verse 6. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. So the Lord brought, called Noah and all his kin into the ark, a piece of wood that was there as a means of redemption from a judgment, a global catastrophe from the water coming out of the earth and spitting it in miles and miles into the atmosphere and whatnot like that. Okay, so these people were said, the Lord said, come unto the people, unto Noah and his family, come 
into the ark and their judgment came. Hmm. Now, is it a come up hither? No. No. But what do we see happening? A global judgment. And Lord saying, come into, onto people who were in a thing made out of wood to save them from his judgment. That is what we call a type. Okay? Most of you guys, you Jesuit people who believe that the Jesuits came up with the, the thing of the redemption of the purchase possession, you probably got a thousand, a $100,000 piece of paper on your wall, don't you? You can figure this one out yourself. Okay? Of every clean beast thou shalt take, of, take to thee by sevens, the male and his female. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's only two genders. And of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. Only two genders, huh? <laughs> of fowls, also of the air. F-O-W-L. Thank you. Of fowls, also of the air, by sevens. The male and his female. Two genders? Even with animals? Hmm, go figure. Yeah. <clears throat> and to keep seed alive upon the face of the earth for yet seven days and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth where we read on verse 6 and Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him see this is the time of the patriarchal period okay their faith was in what God was going to do. Okay? Hence, an obedience was part of that, differing for, from today. Okay? Uh, once the Lord saves you, you can go ahead and live just like a devil all your life. Your life is going to be a mess. You're going to be a laughing stock. The Lord is going to be ashamed of you. But if you come to him on his terms and he genuinely save you, okay, obedience is predicated by a love differing from this dispensation. Okay? All right? The faith in the patriarchal period from the guard, from the end of the Garden of Eden until the going out of the children of Israel uh, onto uh, into the wilderness, you know, the Exodus, that time period, the patriarchal period, similar today, obedience was a part of it because he said to Abraham, go, and he went to Noah, make an ark, and he made it, okay? It was, the faith was in what God was going to do. Today, this dispensation, it's finished. Okay? It's called rightly dividing the word of truth. And virtually all these people who are against the redemption of the purchase possession don't rightly divide the word of truth because they all go usually to Matthew chapter 24, which is describing the time of Jacob's trouble. You are a doctrinal mess like Mark the Messenger, if you do not rightly divide the word of truth. But, let's finish this. Verse 5, And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. Okay? So we see a type of a redemption of the purchased possession. Not an actual come up hither, but the Lord's like, come thou to Noah and his judgment of water. And they were saved from that judgment in an ark made out of gopher wood. Hmm, what is the cross made out of? Linoleum? Right. Okay. First Peter chapter 3. Go back to First Peter. First Peter chapter 3. No, uh, go to First Peter. Excuse me. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 19 on to verse 22. Chapter 3, verses 19 on to verse 22. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. The, before the death, burial, and resurrection and the blood shed on the cross, 
Old Testament saints were in Abraham's bosom, which was in the earth, comforted in Abraham's bosom. After the death, burial, and resurrection, the Lord's like, hey, come on, let's go. Ways to heaven is open now. Let's go. Okay? All right? Which sometimes were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. The like figure we're on to even baptism doth also now save us. Uh, water baptism is not a, re a requirement for your salvation. You wicked charismatic, you wicked Catholic, okay? In the description box, there will be a, a video where we go over the thing of water baptism. You water dog scoundrel, okay? Keep reading. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. Not salvific. But the answer of a good conscience toward God. A public profession of an inner conversion. Okay? By the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. And Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11, just one verse. Verse 7, by faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet in the patriarchal period. Number one, the death, burial, and resurrection was not there. Okay? Don't believe these lying free grace Richlingites. Not every free grace devil is a Richlingite. I'm, I'm reserving that term for a select few people. <laughs> okay? But, all right, remember... They were not looking forward to the cross in Genesis and whatnot, okay? The faith during the patriarchal period was, by faith Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. What he was going to do. And again, what is defined faith? Verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay? Okay? By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Okay? Again, it's a type of the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18. Uh, brethren, we are going to, in this video, we are going to avoid the most obvious uh, places that talk about the redemption of the purchase possession. Our enemies are very well apt and hip to this. We don't actually need those in 1 Corinthians and also in 1 Thessalonians. Okay, we are going to touch in 2 Thessalonians, that's a necessity. But we are not going to go to those two main texts. Okay, we really don't need to to prove the redemption of the purchased possession okay anyway genesis 18 that i'm not use them those are there for us the saints to use for people like hey there is a redemption before the uh time of jacob's trouble okay there's going to be a catching away these people are lying they either don't know or they're stupid willfully ignorant saying well the jesuits came up with it you probably believe that there is one God made up of three persons. You don't rightly divide the word of truth. And that you Christians are going... Why don't you go ahead and just put the Jesuit dog collar on? Okay? I'd have a little bit more respect for you if you at least did that. You scoundrel! I told you, saints, you'd see the mean Brad today. Genesis 18, verses 23 on to verse 26. And Abraham drew near. Abraham. When the Lord, you know, in a body, okay, um, the three people that went to Abraham was not a manifestation of your satanic, little, wicked, filthy, vomitous, satanic trinity. No, two were angels and one was 
God the Father, a precarnate form of the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? <clears throat> Genesis 18, 23, on verse 26. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure, there be 50 righteous within the city. Talking about God going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay? Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If, and the only one he found was Lot, by the way, answering your question. If I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then will I spare all the place for their sakes. And he will, he, he, he got them down, Abraham whittled them down to 10. The Lord knew what was going on. And, you know, the Lord's like, Lot was the only righteous person in Sodom. Okay? The only righteous person. But see, here's what they do. They will go to that part where the Lord talks about during the time of Jacob's trouble where he will send his angels out and grab those people in that they may burn up the chaff, the wicked and stuff like that. And they, and Ruckman even referred to that as two raptures. We did, there's a video in the description box, the two raptures. Okay, where we debunk that. There are not two raptures. Okay, there is only one redemption of the purchased possession. There is a part in the Rev book of Revelation with the two witnesses where the Lord says, come up hither to uh, uh, Moses and Elijah. The difference is, and you can read that in Revelation 11. The difference is, when the redemption of the purchased possession happens, which ends this dispensation, it's going to be, like that. Like that. Quick. In the twinkling of an eye. You're going to be talking to somebody and you're going to blink and they're not going to be there. Okay? It's going to be like you're, you're listening and they're like, they, they, like that. And you're like, whoa! Hey, babe, where, 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 where'd that guy, where, where'd that guy go? Read Revelation 11 with the two witnesses where the Lord says, come up hither. They see, read, go ahead and read it on your own time. They see Moses and Elijah go up. They see it. The redemption of the purchased possession, like that, boy. Here one second, gone the next. Okay? Hence, there are not two raptures. There isn't even one rapture. Okay? It's the redemption of the purchased possession. There's only one of those. Okay? And what happens in the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 11, about the two witnesses, differ totally to what is explained and expounded and taught by the Lord through Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Okay? There's a difference. All right? Anyway, let's continue. Uh, like I said, Questions about that? Check the description box. If you're going to be stupid and just post comments without first searching the scriptures, uh, ain't nobody got time for that. Okay? Go away. Brethren, my those who help out on the channel here, you see that stuff? Go ahead and see that you can get rid of it. Go ahead. I'll give you permission. All right? Genesis now 19. Verses 15 on to verse 22. Okay? The, they like to confuse that part uh, where the Lord tells, He sends His angels. He sends us who go up at the redemption of the purchased possession and come back down with Him at His second coming at the end of the seven-year tribulation, they call it. No. At the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? We come back down and He sends us out to get the elect, the Jews, back, and then he goes. That's how that works. We talk about that in the video to raptures, okay? 
All right? Very slick, you devils. But Genesis chapter 19, verses 15 on to verse 22. The two angels go to Sodom and Gomorrah. Go to Sodom. And, of course, you know the story. The people of the town wanted to rape these male angels. <laughs> Verse 15 on to 22. And when the morning arose, the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon him the, his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. So Lot, it's like, dude, let's go. So righteous people being delivered from God's judgment, again, a type thereof of the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay, let's keep reading. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, Oh, not so, my Lord. Behold now, thy servant hath found grace, unmerited favor, in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast shewed unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me, and I die. Behold now, this city, near to, this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said unto him, it's like, oi vey, Lot. <laughs> I just can picture that. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow the city for which thou hast spoken. It's like, okay, now come on. All right, I'm not going to do Get out of here. <laughs> Haste thee, escape thither. For I cannot do anything till thou become hither. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. Look at that verse. Don't look at me. Look at the verse. It's like, okay, look. You want to go there to the city, Zoar? Fine. Quit wasting time. Let's go. Haste thee. Escape thither. For I cannot do anything till thou come hither. Until thou become thither. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. Uh, Genesis 18, verse 25. That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Hmm. Remember! You're watching this? Okay, you, most of you have already gone. Because you can only handle so much. But um, I'm not a Christian. I'm a saint of the Church of the Living God. <gasps> he just called him Kayate. Kayate. You don't know what a saint is. You get your definition of a saint by what Mystery Babylon calls a saint. Okay? Myself and a beloved brother did a pretty good video. Uh, going through the scriptures and seeing what a saint actually is. I'm a saint of the church of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Okay? I'm not a Christian. All right? There's going to be a lot of Christians left behind. Oh, yeah. Especially those of you who are blasphemously saying that the Jesuits came up with this. No, they didn't. You're lying. And you're stupid. And your breath stink. And I can smell it all the way over here. Okay? Now, let's go, just a very quick reference here. Isaiah 57. Isaiah 57. The righteous perish. Verses 1 and 2. The righteous perish. 
and no man layeth it to heart. And merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Same concept. Many can argue, as some saints, it's like, you know, is this a direct reference on to the redemption of the purchased possession? But the concept thereof is right there. Okay? It's right there. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. Shall not? God of all, the judge of all the earth, do right. Okay? John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Like I said, brethren, we are purposely avoiding the obvious in this video. We are purposely avoiding it. Okay? Because our enemies who are against the truth, they're very aware. That don't mean that we don't use those, but for this video, we're not going to those. They will be in the description box, though. Okay, so, John chapter 10. John chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 4. Verily, verily, <coughs> I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber, free gracers, Catholics, Lutherans, Jehoes, Morons, Mormons, okay? <laughs> Islam, Muslims, Christian scientists, water dogs, Campbellites. Yeah. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. <laughs> the door is Jesus Christ, and you boot the door. Brilliant! <laughs> to him the porter openeth. And the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. That's talking about, let's keep reading. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Skipping to verses 9 on to verse 13. Go ahead and read the context if you want, please do. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in, eternally secure, and out. And find pasture. The thief, Lacunza, the Jesuits came up with the rapture. The Jesuits did not come up with the redemption of the purchased possession. It is a scriptural doctrine and truth, and the type thereof is throughout scripture. We're looking at some of them. The thief. The Jesuits came up with the redemption of the purchased possession. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. Let's read for some 14. I am the good shepherd, and am known, and I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. And you know, they didn't understand you look uh, at verse 6. The parable, this parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. See, if he was talking about going out and witnessing unto the Jews about who he was, that stuff already happened. They could figure that out. Is he talking about us going out and witnessing? No. He was making a reference onto the redemption of the purchased possession that would come later. Okay? Alright? That's what he's making a reference onto it. See, 
the concept and type thereof of a redemption before the purchase possession of redemption before God's wrath and judgment come. The time of Jacob's trouble is God's wrath and judgment on this earth. Okay? Throughout Scripture, we see this concept that God takes out those that are His before His judgment. That doesn't mean that we aren't going to go through uh, tribulation today. No, no. The, the Fox's Book of Martyrs. Okay? All right? No, that's not what that means. No. But God's wrath God's wrath, okay? We are not appointed unto God's wrath. Okay? We're not. God's wrath is the time of Jacob's trouble. This dispensation ends, genius, when we get redeemed. And then all days is going to break loose. And then, hey, you're going to have to prove what a great Christian you are by enduring to the end to be saved. You guys who say that the Jesuits created the redemption of the purchased possession, you're Trinitarian and you don't rightly divide the word of truth. I, again, I say, why don't you just put on the dog collar yourself? I'd have a lot more respect for you. Okay? I would. I would. All right? Let's go to the strongest evidence for the redemption of the purchased possession. Now, Calvinist love Ephesians chapter 1. There will be a link in the description box uh, debunking the stupidity, the vile, rank wickedness, the lie of Calvinism. We'll uh, link in the description box for you to go over. We're not going to go over that here. Okay? Ephesians chapter 1 verses 4 on to verse 14. According as... Let's read verses 3 on verse 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. In Genesis chapter 3, you read about how he will crush uh, his head and he will bruise his heel. The very first... Um, prophecy of Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? Very first prophecy about Jesus Christ, okay? Chosen us uh, for the foundation of the world and stuff like that. What this is talking about is God chose the way of the cross. It's not the elect and non-elect nonsense of Calvinism. We get into that in the video in the description box. We're not going to get into it now, okay? According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Adoption. Predestinated. Okay? Our lot is fixed. When the Lord saves us, he seals us with himself. Once saved, always saved, eternally secure. I bet you, you guys who, uh, uh, who obviously... You guys who say that you're you're going through the great tribulation, you probably are against one saved, all who is saved also, because you have to be against eternal security if you believe you're going through the time of Jacob's trouble, because there is no eternal security in the time of Jacob's trouble except for the hundred forty-four thousand Jehovah's Witnesses. No, for the hundred forty-four thousand Jews. Okay, all right, predestinated. To be with the Lord. Okay? The Lord, you go the way of the cross, the way that he chose. Okay? That's what that's talking about. You go the way of the cross, the way the Lord chose. Okay? You are elect today because he elected the way of the cross. And when you go to him, he seals you. We're going to look at that. Once saved, always saved. When you die, you're going to go to be with the Lord. Okay? This is very simple. Let's keep reading. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. The beloved. 
Israel. We are grafted into their tree to make them jealous. And do you think the Jews are jealous of Christianity? They're not! Why do you think the Messianic Jews, when you say, well, I'm a Christian, they're like, oi vey, oi vey. Good for you, good for you. Yeah, here, here's some gutter fish. Go, don't choke on it, okay? Anyway. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, where he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to, the good, according to his good pleasure which he hath proposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, shall not the judge of all the earth do right. Okay? You're once saved, always saved, eternally secure. You come to the Lord on his terms, the way he chose. You don't boot the door out the way and be a thief and a robber, okay? You go the way he chose. You, he saves you, coming to him broken, contrite and in fear of him. you calling upon his name, okay? He seals you, once saved, always saved. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Your destination is set. Now, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom after in whom also after that ye in whom also after that ye believe ye were sealed once saved always saved sealed with that holy spirit of promise hey come here. read second corinthians chapter 3 pay attention to verse 17 the lord is that spirit one god comprised of Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Yeah. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Noah in the flood. Lot, get out of here! And see, a lot of these guys, they bring up, well, Daniel's 70th week happened already and stuff like that. And not, Listen, the redemption of the purchased possession, the catching away before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? And I've heard these guys... <laughs> okay? I've encountered some guys who have come to Second Thessalonians... And, and in order to defend themselves, they, they try to say like the free gracers do, especially these Richlingites, like to say, well, uh, Romans 9, 10, and 11, Paul was writing doctrine for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. And these guys call themselves dispensational, but yet salvation is the same from beginning to end. You're Catholics. You're Catholics. They're not dispensational. They don't rightly divide the word of truth. you got to watch out for that. Okay? But 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 3, just under verse 8. And I've heard these Christians, uh, the guy who did the um, um, the Lamp in the Dark series, that very good, very, 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 very good defense of the scriptures. Okay? Very good. Doesn't rightly divide the word of truth, though. Has Jesuit James White in one of them. Okay. Even though, even though I got to admit that he kind of did poke at 
Jesuit James White. And Jesuit and Jesuit James White, he knew that he was being poked. That was that was good. I think that's in the third one of them, which I can't upload because YouTube zap it for copyright thing. <laughs> but these guys says, look, well, I now believe in the post-tribulation rapture because I read Second Thessalonians. <laughs> did, what? Did you read only a couple verses? Huh? It's like, and, and they usually, they usually stop at verse 4 or at verse 5. Okay, that's as far as these guys, well, I came to believe in the post tribulation rapture because the second Thessalonians, and then they stop at the most, go to verse 5. Very similar to how the free gracers and Richlingites like to skip over Romans 3, verses 10 on to verse 18. They hate those verses. But let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except. There come a falling away first. Hey! Safe people fall. Lost people, false converts fall away. And when you got some nitwit twit uh, from Oregon saying to you that this is written for the time of Jacob's trouble, uh, you watch out for that guy. Stay away from him. Okay? I'm trying to tell you that 2 Thessalonians from verses 3 on to verse 12, was, is Paul writing doctrine for the time of Jacob's trouble? Red flag, get out of there! No, not of us! Not of us! Okay? But, let's continue. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Saved people fall. Yes, saved people get messed up. Lost people fall away. Big difference. Okay? We're seeing falling away like crazy. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, the sop. Okay, Judas is scared of the sop, okay? So, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? So say the verse come falling away and then that man's sin be revealed and then keep reading. Okay, there, there, there's 17 verses in this chapter. Rapido, come on. Keep reading. Keep reading. Okay? Don't don't just stop. They, they, at the most, they stop at verse 5. Keep reading. And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he, the body of Christ, only he who now letteth will let. Unlike what Mr. I'm not even going to say it, guys. I, I, I stay away from him. Unlike some senile little fart who says that Jesus is not omnipotent, omniscient, or omnipresent, uh, God is omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. Jesus Christ was God our Father. God is not going anywhere. He's omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. Okay? He is. He's not going anywhere. It's like with some of the Hebrew people that I've witnessed to about talking about the Holocaust. Where was God during the Holocaust? He was right there. Any questions about that? Look in the playlist about the Jewish Hebraic people. Okay, But God's not going anywhere. God's not going to be on the earth. Huh? Oh yeah, you can maul it. He left Hezekiah in a dispensation where there was no eternal security. No, poor comparison. God is always present. Okay? So, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he, God, is omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. He's not going anywhere. So what's this talking about? Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. 
Well, that's when saints die. Oh, well, what about the saints that are alive and remain? If the saints... Okay, if it were... Think about this. Okay, use a little brain matter here. If it were, which it is not, as some of these guys like to tell you it is, that the body of Christ is going through the time of Jacob's trouble, every saint would be... That's that man of sin, the son of perdition. And hey... Now the end begins. It's not Manuel Marcone. Okay? You idiot. Every saint would be, that's that man of sin, the son of perdition. But see, Christianity and these people have deluded uh, the populace to the point that once we get taken out of the way, no one's going to be able to recognize who that man of sin, the son of perdition is, except some of these that get left behind who were duped, okay? That, I believe, is going to happen. That some of these that get left behind who are like, oh, wow, man, we were wrong. And they're going to be the ones that's like, that's, that's who, and of course, that man of sin, the son of perdition, he's got only a short time, seven years, he's going to get rid of those guys quick. Not going to be a blip to him. He's, I believe he's going to be, he's building up, uh, Satan is building up is, uh, Ishmael, um, the Arabs, Islam, to be the enemy that he focused on at the first to get the world behind him. That's what I believe. Okay, It's not going to be you Christians who get left behind. There are going to be some of you who get left behind who are going to be like, hey, whoa, hey, that's him, whoa. Okay, but by then, see, you've missed it. You're in a different dispensation. Okay? For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The redemption of the purchase possession happens. We get caught up. And then shall that wicked be revealed. That man of sin, the son of perdition. Falling away is happening. The redemption happens. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Well, that's just the papacy. The papacy gets destroyed in uh, uh, Revelation 18. It's not the papacy. The papacy is a system of Antichrist. But absolutely. But the papacy itself is not that man of sin, the son of perdition. Have you ever wondered why the Antichrist is not in Scripture? The papacy is the Antichrist. The papacy is, a, is associated to that spirit of Antichrist. It is Antichrist system, yes, but see... That man of sin, the son of perdition. You see the danger? You see? That, that's the Antichrist. The Antichrist doesn't appear in the Scripture. Have you ever wondered that? Because there are people. There are some of these guys who watch that, that jogger guy 66 and that weirdo Brett Norman, okay? They say that the Antichrist is the papacy. Dude, the Antichrist doesn't appear in Scripture. For that reason, think about it. You got these guys, not rightly dividing the word of truth, okay? Don't believe in internal security, I'm sure, okay? All right, <laughs> okay? And the Antichrist is Rome. It's a system. No! That man of sin, the son of perdition. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Okay? And also, this one is not written down, but um, Titus chapter 2, this is one of the uh, obvious ones, but I'm going to mention this. Titus chapter 2, Verses 11 out of verse 15. 
For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope, and who is our hope? The Lord Jesus Christ, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Looking for that blessed hope. That's a reference under the redemption of the purchased possession. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. Okay? We're saved, sealed, born again, new creatures in Christ Jesus. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Yes. Um, I'm not all the way redeemed yet. I'm saved. Eternal, eternally secure. What does that mean? I'm not totally redeemed yet. The redemption of the purchased possession, the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. If I die, I'm not working. You don't work to stay saved or be saved. No, you don't. No, you don't. The redemption of the purchased possession. I am a purchased possession. Okay? Once saved, always saved. Eternally secure. Not working to stay saved or be saved or be right with God. No. I'm eternally secure. Okay? All right? But partially redeemed in that what has yet to happen? The redemption of the purchased possession. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. And Revelation chapter 4. One verse. And verse 1. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. Who's the door? And the, verse, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither. And I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. The redemption of the purchased possession is a scriptural doctrine taught by the apostles, believed on by the apostles, given unto the apostles by the Lord himself. The very concept in and of itself is within Scripture. Okay? Genesis again, 19, uh, Genesis chapter 18 again. Remember this. Remember too. Unfortunately, you are only as relevant as your latest video. People don't want to go through all that we have and all that has been done by the saints. So you're only as relevant as your newest video, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Genesis chapter 18. Okay? Verses 23 and verse 26. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And again, for this they would talk about how the Lord sends out his angels to get the people, you know, the, the two raptures thing, okay? They're not rightly dividing the word of truth. Those angels that the Lord sends out that they're referring to, okay, those are us who go up with him and come back down at his second coming. You serve a cruel God. You you people who think that you're gonna that you're gonna be going through the great tribulation. You serve a you serve a cruel God. You're not serving the true God of the scriptures. If you don't really know the matter, hopefully this will help you. Okay? There will be links in the description box for you to go through. 
Okay, if you don't know, that's one thing. If you know and want to believe, well, the Jesuits came, the Lord rebuke you. Okay? You! Okay? You! Who don't rightly divide the word of truth. You who don't believe in eternal security. You who preach contrary to the doctrine for us today of the redemption of the purchased possession. Go ahead, put the little dog collar on it, get, take the little wafer cookie and the wine, and just come out in the open that you're a coadjutor. I'd have a lot more respect for you then. Verse 26. And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. Of course, he only saw a lot. So. It's going to be it for this video. The Lord's been doing some... The Lord's been pretty active here recently. Just, you know, got a whole wall here with sticky notes to where it's like, okay, I want you to speak about that one today. It's like, okay, Lord, I got another one that I thought I was going to be doing today, but then uh, the Lord used a dear brother. It's like, hey, talk about this. <laughs> so that's going to be it for this video. That's going to be it for this video. There will be links for you in the description box to consider more of these things. Um, people, if there comes one of these Christians tell, uh, telling you that it's, Salvation has been the same from beginning to end, that there is no eternal security, and that you're going to be going through the great tribulation. Get away from such a fellow, because they are lying to you. Uh, they are teaching Catholic doctrine. They might as well put on the dog collar and openly come out as a Jesuit. So, watch out for these people. Okay? Watch out for them. So, we love you. Thank you for all you have who are praying for us. Uh, who help us. Thank you. Um, haven't seen Leo today again. Uh, whenever, you know, there comes times where I won't see Leo for a while. If uh, the Lord gives, you know, gives an opportunity, I will keep all of you brethren updated on Leo, uh, the homeless man. Okay, please keep him in prayer. Um, the Lord has answered prayer concerning that man. So anyway, that's going to be it for this video. See you in the next one. Hey, brother. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Bye-bye.